one of the most important steps you begin before you even start to plan your videos to think, who is this video for? Who's going to watch this video? I know it's easy to think I'll shoot some video and show it to my friends, or I'll shoot some video and show it to my family, and they're going to love it. But think for a minute. When you've watched video from your friends, when you've watched video from your family, how many times have you felt kind of like, I don't know, really bored? It was no fun? You wanted to leave as soon as possible, get out of the room? Well, the way to solve that problem is to think, who is this for? What's the goal of this video? Who is your audience? Who is your competition? That is, what are other people making for that audience? So if I think my audience is going to be uh, female students between the age of 18 and 21 because they're coming to the school, I'm going to make a video to help them learn how to be a good student. So this is just for them. Well, go watch other videos for them and see things that are done in those videos that you can maybe adopt or borrow. That's the competition. What does the audience want? It's easy to say I'm going to make a video to teach new students how to do some tasks inside the school, but is that what they want? Do they want to know that? So you need to think what is it they want that will draw them in and make them interested. You need to also think about when will somebody be watching this? Are they going to watch it inside a room as part of a presentation? For example, if new students come to the school and I'm going to make an orientation video to teach female students how to use the dorm rooms and how to select their classes, or I'll make another video just for male students in the male dorm rooms. So this is a very special audience. Now who's going to watch it? These new students are going to watch it and maybe they have to watch it because they have to sit down in an orientation and watch. Well, if they have to watch it, my video can be a little bit different than if they don't have to watch it. But even if they have to watch it inside of an auditorium, inside of a room, still they can fall asleep, as my students often do, or they can just get distracted, they can play on their phone. Today people are so easy to be distracted. So you need to think, where are they going to watch this? And then how can I keep that interesting? So for example, if it's in an auditorium during a presentation, maybe your video can be a little bit interactive. It has a bit of video and then it stops and then a person speaks to get people's attention again. And a little bit of music to get attention, something like that. And then the last question kind of is why? Why are you going to use video rather than something else? Would it be easier maybe just to write some instructions down on a sheet of paper, make copies and give it to the new students? This is just an example of course, it could be for anything. So is it easier to do it another way? Is it easier to take some photos, put it into a little booklet and show people step by step what to do? You know, I've had times where I give a lecture and I talk about a topic and I think I spend like three hours talking about a topic in detail and then one day later students come by and ask me, well, how do I do that? What, what, what is that that you talked about? I forget. Because they weren't paying attention. I'm not sure lecture was the best way. I probably would have been better to make an instruction booklet, maybe two or three pages, or maybe an instruction video would have kept their interest and they can watch it when they need it. So let me give you another example of how to think about this. Go to the internet and go to a site like iTunes, Apple, or just inside Google or inside YouTube or Youku. Go ahead and look for new movie trailers. Those are the one minute or two minute, sometimes three minute trailers. They show you a new movie that's coming out. And go ahead and just pick one, but don't think about it. Just randomly pick one and then pick another one and another one. And as you watch the trailers, think about this. Are you interested to watch this movie? Are you interested to go see this movie? I would imagine that not every trailer catches your interest. Some you think, hey, I would like to see that. And some you say, eh, I'm not interested. And some you say, I hate that. I don't want to watch it. So that's a great example of teaching you that kind of interest. Those trailers are made for a special group, a market segment, what we call marketing, a group of people. You may be in that group or you may not be in that group. So when you see a trailer and you like it, you're in that target market 
audience. When you see a trailer and you don't like it, that's not for you. Think about the different things that are done inside the trailer that make you attracted or not attracted. And the goal is not to say the trailer should be changed to make you attractive, no. The point is that that trailer maybe is not for you. That movie is not for you, that movie is for a different group of people. Okay, well, let's take a walk to our hardware table. Now, what hardware are we gonna look at today? Because hardware is so much fun, right? Well. Let me search through my hardware here, see what I got to show you. And I think what I have is something interesting that you should all know about. And here it is, it's a watch. That's my little watch. Yeah, why is a watch an important piece of hardware? Well, let me explain why a watch is important. What I'm talking about is time. In video production, the biggest mistake I see students make is they don't realize how much time it's going to take. Many, often, I should many times, often, students come to my office and they want to borrow some video equipment, which is great, you know, I'm really happy. So we go up to the lab and say, here's a video camera for you, here you go. And I ask them, what are you going to do? And they say, we're going to record a visiting guest. He's giving a lecture, and our professor wants to record the lecture. And I say, great, go for it. When is that? And they go, oh, in about 10 minutes. And I go, whoa, 10 minutes. There is no way you're going to be ready in 10 minutes. So let me talk just a minute about this time issue. Even the best, most experienced movie makers, video producers, they understand they need to begin planning way early. And when I say way early, I'm talking about you know months, if not years ahead of time. Now in your case, you're not such a big production, right? But you do need to plan ahead at least days. You need to think about which day are you gonna shoot your video, where are you gonna go? Are you going to more than one location? Even if you're gonna be inside a studio like I am here, you still need to plan ahead to make sure everything is going to be set up and ready. You need to get other people together usually at the same place and the same time and that can be hard just by itself. But the main reason you need time is because in English as we say, things happen. Bad stuff always happens. Maybe you get everything ready, you get to the site and you realize you're missing batteries. Or maybe your batteries are okay but then they're dead in 10 minutes or maybe you forgot a lens or a camera, or maybe someone forgot the tripod, or maybe someone is late and can't show up on time. Maybe the audio is not working. In fact, that's one that always happens. We'll talk a lot about that. So when I say time, what I'm saying is two things. One, planning time. You need to use your watch and your calendar to plan ahead. Tomorrow, next week, what will we do? For example, my idea of students coming to borrow equipment, they should come a week beforehand and say, we have a visitor in seven days. Can I borrow the camera four days ahead of time and set it up and practice once with another student to make sure it's all working? That's the way it should be done. So planning ahead. The second thing about time is you need a lot of time for just shooting the video. It's easy to think, oh, well, the lecturer is coming at 10 a.m. I'll just set up the camera at 9.50 and we'll be okay. I guarantee something will go wrong. I guarantee something will go wrong. And that's a simple production. Somebody's coming and you're just gonna video record them. What about a more complicated production where you have multiple people or a script or some material to present? I guarantee things will go wrong. So planning is one thing. And the second thing is for everything you do, especially shooting the video, recording the video, Editing the video, all of these things are going to take way longer than you think. It would not be unusual to say you need to prepare a day, one day for basically every single piece or every single shot that you're going to go out and shoot. We'll talk more about that later in detail, but I think you get my idea. Even here, my production is fairly simple. I have a studio with lights and I have a couple cameras and I basically have an idea of what I'm going to say. But it takes days to get it ready and then always something happens, stuff happens. So, the most important thing we get is time.